Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and in this video we're going to be covering W. Hoffman's T177 Grand Piano, an exciting new addition to the market. We're going to be covering its action and its sound, its structural features, and of course I'll be doing a bit of playing on it. Be sure to check out the separate video where all we do is actually play the T177 instead of talk about it like in this video. And if it's the first time to the channel, do subscribe. We really appreciate the support and we respond to virtually all the comments you leave. Let's get started right away. So we're in front of the Hoffman Traditional 177. And this is a model that's a part of the Hoffman Tradition line. Uh, and that's a piano that C. Beckstein is making. It's an entirely European piano. Uh, and it's always good to be able to clarify that because so many uh, European pianos actually mean that there's a huge amount that's being done uh, in Asia. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but for some reason this is something that people are very um, sensitive uh, about and, and sometimes there's a lack of disclosure and blah 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 blah. Anyway, uh, so just to get that out front, it's a European piano that's actually made in Europe. Uh, now Hoffman as a brand has three different levels to it and so the Tradition series sits, uh, according to Beckstein anyway, sits right in the middle. Um, the professional line is the very best of the Hoffman, the Tradition is what they consider to be sort of their middle line and then the Hoffman Vision uh, is where the is kind of where the entry point into uh, the Hoffman brand. I've played on the professional series and the traditional series extensively, um, and they definitely have a different tone. But I I'm, uh, would not describe the tradition in the Hoffman as being um, uh, above or below one another. To me, they're very much a parallel product. Um, with two different tonal philosophies that they're going for. And that's exactly what I get out of the 177 here. Uh, it is a warmer sound, it's a rounder attack than what I get on the P series, the professional series, which is definitely going more for that uh, very specific bell-like tone. Um, the Tradition Piano here, I'm getting a really lovely, warm, um, clear sound throughout the entire piano uh, without that specific uh, bell tone as prominently as the P-Series. And the P-Series also uh, is very forward in terms of its, of its treble bias, whereas the Tradition Series is much warmer. It actually kind of reminds me a little bit um, of almost a, a Kawai GX or a Shigeru sound. Uh, pretty colorful, but, but warm. Anyway, so the 177 is the middle size. There is one size smaller than this. I think it's the 161, uh, and then there's a, a T186 as well. Um, so this is the first time that we've reviewed the T177. So you know, I'm really, really glad that you've chosen to give us a few minutes of your time to explore this instrument with us. So we've covered, you know, who makes it, where it comes from. Some of the specific features of the instrument uh, before we get into talking about its action and its sound. So this instrument is equipped with several features uh, which are important to know. For one, it's uh, got a duplex scale. So that means that there are some metal fulcrums uh, behind the top treble sections uh, to kind of give this extra length of uh, resonance on the string that sort of adds to the top end harmonics. Um, the piano uses a solid spruce uh, soundboard. It's a white soundboard um, that is grown in an alpine region, not as high or as rare as something you find on the C. Beckstein concert series, but a very, very high quality piece of solid spruce. So that's really important to know. It also uses um, a fairly thick um, a hardwood rim, not a hard rock maple, um, but I believe that it's using a combination of mahoganies and beeches and some maple uh, in, that, uh, in that rim. I definitely feel like there's a huge amount of projection coming out of this instrument. Uh, and of course, the Hoffmans use C. Beckstein hammers. So B. C. Beckstein is now making hammers for all of its lines. Uh, they're not sourcing those from anyone, which means that every single model and every single piano has its own specific weighting, its own specific design to make sure that uh, the piano kind of is maximizing all of its tonal capacity which is, I think is really cool. There's not very many companies in the world that are doing that. Um, certainly ones, not ones that are this boutique 
uh, and this small Bechstein's making five or six thousand pianos a year compared to like Kawai or Yamaha who make into the hundreds of thousands of pianos a year. Of course they've got the scale and size to do this but you know Bechstein is definitely focused on controlling the product and controlling the experience. So now that you've got a general sense of the background of the piano, let's move on to the action. Uh, the Hoffman action is a Bechstein action and they call this the silver action. This is exactly the same action that goes into the Bechstein academies um, and the Hoffman uh, professionals as well. A little bit different than what goes into the Hoffman vision. Uh, so the silver action is in a lot of ways the same design as their gold action, but the big difference is uh, the wood stocks they're, that they're using uh, to cut the whippings, cut the uh, shanks, and also uh, the amount of time that the wood has been dried for, the number of hours in the factory uh, that it's being weighted, regulated, and really just uh, precisely assembled. So you're sort of um, taking the same basic design, but then everything is sort of moving down a notch into uh, the realm of honestly what the majority of professional actions uh, get which is still dozens and dozens of hours of prep time just not as fanatical as what say the Seebeckstein uh, concert series is but not that dissimilar to what the Academy uh, is receiving uh, which is worth noting. Um, that action Reminds me, honestly reminds me a lot of a slightly light Steinway action is maybe um, how I would describe it. Um, has a sense of being just a little bit more shallow uh, than what you would expect out of um, uh, some of the Japanese pianos. Definitely more shallow than, say, a Fazioli. The Fazioli actually has a sense of being a deeper action to me. Yeah, very easy to control and really beautifully regulated right, uh, right out of the factory, right from the factory. good repetition speed on that as well. Uh, really effortless and almost uh, no uh, sort of missed strikes or double strikes there. Yeah, uh, let's talk about the sound. On the 177, I love the treble on this piano. I mean I'm I'm a really, really, really big fan. It's a strong projection out of the treble, but not strident in the least. Yeah. Beautiful, really well controlled harmonics, uh, partials up there. Oh, crystal clear. So that's what's going on in the treble. Um, certainly colorful, but like I said, it's got a, almost a really nice mid-rangey quality to it, but the projection is great and a really clear attack. Mid-range is a very American sounding mid-range. I'm not sure there's a better way to describe that. This reminds me so much of a Steinway M or a Mason and Hamlin Model A right in here. Everything about it, the response, the, the uh, sort of the tonal profile, the dynamic range too. The bass has definitely got an edge to it. But 
what I really like is that even though we're in a lower uh, price range as some of the Academy Becksteins, they've done a lovely job of making sure the break between the steel strings, uh, tricords down to the bicords that are copper wound is really nice and even. There's, there's not three or four notes where there's kind of wild harmonics coming off of it. <laughs> Transition is pretty smooth, uh, which is great. And for people who are really keen researchers and are not so much concerned about what name is on the fallboard as they are just the musical experience they're getting for the money, here's a tip, or at least this is something that I would share that I've observed. Uh, I, I've seen quite a few of the Bechstein A160s, A190s come through, A175s, and to my eye, looking at bolt patterns, looking at the plates, looking at a number of things, there seems to be a direct uh, lineage between the Bechstein Academy Grands um, and the Hoffman Traditions. Not so much the Hoffman Professionals, but the Hoffman Traditions, um, with a few very, very subtle uh, I do mean subtle differences, this essentially is a Czech built Bechstein Academy. And so you're getting a break on price. Um, is there going to be a slight difference uh, in the voicing um, quality and in the regulation quality between the two? I have detected some, but that's not uh, anything that couldn't possibly be made up uh, in after sales service or it may not be anything that you'd miss in the first place. So the Hoffman piano, very satisfying instrument to play, incredibly capable. Like I said, probably one of the most American sounding uh, European built pianos I've ever played. Um, and fantastic value. What you're getting for the money is really quite extraordinary. It definitely beats uh, you know, uh, the, the value for money, I think, from what you would get from a New York Steinway or, or even, quite frankly, the Bechstein Academy if it was in the right room and, and you weren't necessarily having the side-by-side -side comparison to compare the, uh, uh, the regulation and maybe some of the finer details of the voicing. So. Uh, check it out if you have an opportunity, either stopping into our showroom here in Toronto or any other showroom you know, throughout North America, throughout Europe, uh, wherever Becksteins are sold uh, or Hoffmans are sold. Um, go and play one. It should be on your list if you're sort of in that $40,000 uh, US price range, you know, give or take a few thousand here and there. It's an instrument that you're going to want to check out. I highly recommend it. I think you'll enjoy it. And I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, as we said at the beginning, we'd love your support. We'd love your comments as well. Uh, so please write to us. Let us know what you thought. We'll see you back for another review shortly. My name is Stu Harrison for Miriam Piano.